The Curtis Wright Corporation was once a famous American aircraft design and manufacturing company, and reached its peak during World War II, becoming the largest aircraft manufacturer. However, the company's aircraft business gradually declined after the war. Today, we will discuss the last aircraft designed and manufactured by this company, the X-19 quadrotor aircraft. The X-19 was developed by the company in the early 1960s and was an early experimental model of a tilt-rotor aircraft. The company referred to it as the M-200, and it was also the company's hope for revitalizing its aircraft business. This aircraft was developed during a special period, when Western countries were all crazy about vertical-slash-short takeoff and landing aircraft, and various technologies were being researched. Curtis Wright Corporation probably wanted to join the trend, but they chose the relatively unknown tilt-rotor aircraft at the time. The aircraft's fuselage was similar to that of a conventional aircraft, with a streamlined body, a full metal hard shell structure, a high single vertical tail, and a front tricycle landing gear retracting into the fuselage. Usually, designers either design the aircraft around specific aerodynamic layouts or focus on engine development. However, the X-19 was designed around the propellers, based on the company's previous experience. Furthermore, the X-19 itself used the principle of radial lift. Although it looks similar to today's V-22 tilt rotor aircraft, the operating principles of the two rotor systems are different. Here we will briefly explain radial lift. This is a force generated by all propellers. When the propeller disc is horizontal, the rotating propeller generates a downward force perpendicular to the ground. However, when the propeller is tilted at a certain angle in a certain direction, the environment in which the propeller blade operates changes at each stage. When the propeller blade rotates downwards from above the disc due to the angle of attack, a lift force is generated perpendicular to the propeller axis, known as radial lift. However, this force may not be obvious on propellers with different structures. The X-19 aimed to make the most of this force. The X-19 had tandem wings, with the front wing being relatively smaller, mounted on the upper rear fuselage behind the cockpit, and the rear wing located on the upper rear part of the fuselage near the tail. Both wings had flaps, probably used to control the aircraft's attitude during level flight. Two T-55 L-7 turboshaft engines were installed above the rear fuselage, each producing 2,650 horsepower. Their power was transmitted through drive shafts to drive the propellers at the wingtips on each side. The propellers had a diameter of 4 meters and could rotate forward by 90 degrees for level flight. In reality, the propellers were not completely vertical to the ground in the vertical position. The axis of the front propeller reached 97 degrees, producing a slightly forward thrust, while the axis of the rear propeller could only tilt to 82 degrees, producing a slightly rearward thrust. The X-19 was considered a light transport aircraft, with a small cabin that could accommodate four passengers or 450 kilograms of cargo. The sole prototype made its first flight in November 1963, but it crashed, and work on the second aircraft was abandoned. In fact, the X-19 had many issues that prevented it from being practical at the time, such as the flight control of the four propellers, and how to maintain the aircraft's stability during conventional maneuvers like pitching and yawing. These were difficult technical obstacles to overcome at the time.